And that's a wrap on pre-season testing for another year. There's been a huge amount of mileage, the most I can remember in a long time in just three days here in Bahrain. The pace is coming down. We've improved a lot from last year. But the big questions, who's made a big step? A Red Bull, the team to beat again. Can Ferrari get there for a challenge over the whole season? Have Mercedes recovered? Who's winning the midfield? Let's have a little look team by team. And we're going to start with Williams. So Williams, I think, had a good week. One of the teams that really amped up the, the mileage, the second most laps of anyone. Logan Sargent completed three race distances on day two, the rookie in that car. But I thought the car looks pretty reasonable. The, the low fuel running that they did was, was sensible. They did it in the morning when the track temperature was a little bit higher. And of course, next week when it's in qualifying, they will be under the light. So there maybe is a little bit more to come from them there. And the car looked compliant. The drivers were very happy. The long run though was maybe a little area of weakness looking at some of the, the comparisons. Maybe they were the only ones running on a full tank, but against some of the others, did look like they might be just holding back a little bit there. And uh, that was also a bit of a weakness for them last year. Some qualifying heroics and then just dropping back in the race. I wonder if that trend will continue. And I do think whilst Williams have made a good progress, both drivers very happy, loads of mileage. Hopefully they're closer into the midfield. I do still think maybe they'll be towards the, the back end of it though. Alpha Tauri. A mixed bag for them in testing. Ended on a high with Yuki Tsunoda at the wheel on a C5 soft tyre and the car looked a little sharp, a little better, because actually on day one and two, looking around the track, it looked a little bit lazy, a little bit indirect. Uh, Nick de Vries waiting a long time for understeer, a, a lot of the time when I was watching, and uh, you lose a lot of lap time in that way. Maybe it was really fuel laden, and they managed to exploit it all at the end of, end of testing. But to me, the car looks a little indirect, and uh, compared to some of the other midfield teams, don't know if they've made a, a big enough step forward, even if everyone else is uh, is finding time. They did the most miles though, and uh, De Vries as a, as a rookie will gain a lot from that. Sonoda, uh, again with a decent mileage at the end of the week, managed to, to get on the soft tyre and do something. Can they move forward from the back of the field? It's going to be so tight in that midfield again. This is a real tough call. I think they might be down in ninth, and they're going to probably miss Pierre Gasly to lead that team initially, whilst Nick De Vries gets up to speed, and Yuki's got to step up to the mark. McLaren. Probably the, the toughest week for them, and another tough pre-season for them. This time last year, they were barely getting any miles with problems with the brakes. Uh, this time, it's the wheel brows that uh, were causing problems, just braking, and uh, clearly an area where, in all the, the teams, Still a big area of development is uh, weight saving and getting down to that weight limit. The weight limit is reduced by a couple of kilos this year and McLaren have once again come with a fundamental flaw in their car that derailed a lot of their running. They had the fewest laps of anyone, which is not good for Oscar Piastri, the, uh, the rookie who didn't really have a, a particularly clean start. Have they got enough to be in the midfield at the start? They're very downbeat and they, were, they already knew some of this in the, in the launch. They've got new specs coming, they've got upgrades planned, but this was undoubtedly tough. The car on track, it looked well enough balanced, uh, but I just think they're missing downforce. They're missing fundamental speed, and they're a team playing catch up at the start of the year, no doubt. Happy Haas. Very happy Haas, actually. Nico Hulkenberg back at the wheel. Kevin Magnussen there, still enjoying life, having come back this time last year. Two of my former teammates, and the whole team were really happy to have them there as well. Nico settled in very quickly. He's an experienced pro. He's a very quick driver as well. I know that myself. They're very happy with the team dynamic, with the pace of the car. They were a team that flew out of the blocks this time last year with K-Mag, his triumphant return with a fifth place. And they'll be eyeing that again for, uh, for next season. The big thing for Haas is can they keep the development going through the whole year? That's where they've just been dropping back against some of their midfield rivals. I think they've got a car that can start in a decent place. Their aero platform looks pretty sensible, as it often does at the start of the season. The drivers are there and they're going to be ready to exploit it to try and get some points. Can they keep the development going? A bit more budget, new title sponsor this year. I think it has to be pretty happy with this week. Alfa Romeo. For me, these are maybe the the, the dark horses of uh, the season. Maybe not so dark because uh, Joe topped the times on day two and, and Valtteri Bottas as well on day three, putting on the soft tyres again and going for what was undoubtedly more of a glory run in that car. 
but the car looks good. Again, looks very stable. The driver's able to lean on it, get confidence, and I uh, think they're in a good place. Interestingly, a little bit like Haas, these are two teams that, uh, that did really well at the start of last year, produced a good car. I think they've both done it again this year. A bit like Haas, Alfa Romeo slipped back through the season. So a big task for them is also gonna be to add parts to the car. But I think their car is at a really decent baseline and, uh, and both drivers should be aiming for points next week. Alpine. They did the second fewest laps, but still got a pretty good haul. It's testament to how the whole field has really improved in reliability. The car looks really, really stiff, really rigid over the bumps and the curbs. The driver's having to work really hard at the cockpit to, uh, to keep it coming off the curbs neatly, to be braking neatly. And uh, it looks really susceptible to, to probably street circuits at some point in the calendar where you need a little bit more compliance. But that's not necessarily a particularly bad thing on other circuits because when you have a stiffer car, you can create a good downforce uh, platform. And that's what Alpine are seeing on the data. They're seeing their numbers are pretty good. They went nowhere near a soft tyre this week, so they stayed on the tyres that are going to be uh, used at next week's Grand Prix. And I hear that there's going to be some upgrades coming for that car, as there will be for many cars, but Alpine particularly excited by that. I have to say, looking at the car on track, the skittishness, the, uh, the lack of pace, uh, the driver's working really hard at the wheel, including Pierre Gasly joining the team. Uh, it didn't look particularly great, to be honest, but the team are really happy, the drivers are really happy. Maybe they know something I don't, so I'm plonking them in the midfield. I trust them more than me at this stage, and I think with some upgrades, they, uh, they will surely be a force to be reckoned with. Didn't see it, but I still think that, uh, that we can't discount Alpine at the moment from everything else behind the scenes. Uh, let's call them in the midfield, but quite a big unknown. Aston Martin. From the unknown to what we think is more known, which is the brilliant performance this week of Aston Martin. Uh, they were buoyant in the launch season. Uh, they had big aims and a big new driver as well, Fernando Alonso at the wheel, two-time champ, who did more than his fair share because there's no Lance Stroll this week who's recovering from a, a bike crash. Question marks about who's going to be racing for them next week in that car. Will Stroll be back? Will Felipe Drogovic be in the car? He did two mornings and uh, got acquainted with their Aston Martin car. But for me, really impressed with Fernando Alonso in the car. Uh, he looked on it straight away as soon as I saw him trackside. He was hustling. The car looked hooked up. It looked really poised, had a sharp enough front end, but a settled rear. The first thing you need in pre-season testing is to have a settled rear end so you're not worried about it when you attack the corners. Fernando certainly wasn't leaning on it from the word go. Got loads of mileage in. The car looks quick. It's probably the car that's changed the most from last year as well. And uh, it looks a little bit more like a Red Bull. They followed that design and I think they're getting some just rewards. So next week, Fernando Alonso, for me, one to watch. Best of the rest in the midfield, Mercedes. I think in third, it's going to be Mercedes still. Not the cleanest of, of testing weeks for Mercedes, testing three days. Day one, the car just looked a little bit on edge. Both Hamilton and Russell fighting the car a bit more than the obvious comparisons of Red Bull and Ferrari, who they aim to beat this year, having chased them the whole way through the last season. Uh, so day one, seeking balance. Day two, seeking front end downforce, which went mysteriously missing, and the team had a bit of an inquest for it. Day three, it looked a bit better. Day two was actually curtailed with a hydraulic issue as well. And then day three, Mercedes seemed to find that little bit of balance, seemed to find a bit of pace. It was working so much better on the soft tires for them. That's understandable. The soft tires can sometimes plaster over a few cracks. And maybe that was the case, but the car did look much more hooked up. Lewis Hamilton at the wheel seemed to get a bit more out of it. The drivers seemed much happier right at the end of testing. I think they're going to be clear of the rest of the midfield but I don't think they're going to be close enough to Ferrari and don't think they're going to be close enough to Red Bull to fight immediately. It might be a year of chasing again for Mercedes, or certainly a start to the year of chasing, but they're in a much better position than they were last year. Ferrari. Last year's runners-up, Ferrari, have kept on the trend of where they were at. They've carried on the design philosophy, as have Mercedes, as have Red Bull, none of which are really converging too much to the, uh, to the others' ideas from last season. And the Ferrari car still looks really good. Charles Leclerc in it day one, able to hustle it, able to have the confidence. It's not really surprising that a lot of the drivers had the confidence straight away. The cars weren't doing anything particularly tricky because pretty much the evolutions of the car they had last year, rather than the big revolution we had this time 12 months ago, 
Uh, so Leclerc looked really good. Sainz getting up to pace as well. The big thing for Carlos is can he start the season as well as he was finishing it last year? The other big thing for Ferrari, how is their power unit? The reliability held them back a lot in the second half of last year. We saw the, the rear end go up in smoke a few times. Uh, there's other operational issues with the team as well. Fred Vasseur at the helm will try and steady the ship. Is the car good enough to fight for race wins? It might be, it might be pretty close, but I think they're gonna start just a whisker behind Red Bull. Red Bull. They've had an amazing three days of testing. They can barely hide the smiles from their face this week. Max Verstappen was confident enough to do all his running in the first two days and leave the last day, traditionally the best day, where the most grips down and you go for your glory runs. That all went to Sergio Perez this week. Max had his feet up on the final day and was feeling in pretty buoyant mood. The car looks brilliant out on track. Barely saw either driver have a correction, particularly when they went through the medium range to the softer range of tires. Uh, Verstappen looked hooked up from the word go. Every time he got in it, he didn't make any mistakes. Uh, in fact, the only spin a week was Oscar Piastri in, in the tricky McLaren, but the, the Verstappen Red Bull looked settled, looked really good. Checo took a little bit longer to get up to speed, I think, but it's an important winter for him important three days for him and he ended it really strongly as well really emphasizing the performance that i think red bull have they've come out strong and for me they are considerably the team to beat this season but as usual it's only testing we've all been wrong before and we could be wrong again all the usual caveats apply we don't know the fuel loads we don't know what engine modes we're doing and it's a 23 race season so upgrades and development can change the course of this season from the first race next week to the last. We'll see you next week how close this all is.